Vespers is a sunset evening prayer service in the Orthodox, Roman Catholic and Eastern Catholic, Anglican, and Lutheran liturgies of the canonical hours. The word comes from the Greek hespera, hespera and the Latin vesper, meaning evening. It is also referred to in the Anglican tradition as evening prayer or evensong. The term is also used in some Protestant denominations such as the Presbyterian Church and Seventh-day Adventists to describe evening services. Topic. Current use Topic. Topic. Latin Rite Catholic Topic. Vespers, also called evening prayer, takes place as dusk begins to fall. Evening prayer gives thanks for the day just past and makes an evening sacrifice of praise to God. Psalm chapter 141 verse 1. The general structure of the Roman Rite Catholic service of Vespers is as follows. Vespers opens with the singing or chanting of the words Deus in auditorium meum intend. Domini ad adiavandum me festina. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Sicut irat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. Alleluia, O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Is omitted during Lent. The appointed hymn from the hymnarium is then sung. The appointed psalmody is then sung, in the liturgy in general use since 1970 there are two psalms and a New Testament canticle, while in the older form of the Roman rite, five psalms are sung instead. Each psalm and canticle concludes with a doxology Gloria Patri and is preceded and followed by an antiphon. Additionally, most psalms also have a short caption explaining how the psalm canticle relates to the church in a Christological or spiritual way. Lastly, English translations oftentimes have a psalm prayer said after the Gloria and before the antiphon. After the psalms, there is a reading from the Bible. Following the reading, there is a short responsory consisting of a verse, a response, the first half only of the Gloria Patri, and then the verse again. Then the participants sing the Magnificat. The Canticle of the Blessed Virgin Mary from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55. The Magnificat is always preceded by an antiphon, and followed by the Gloria and an antiphon. At solemn vespers, the altar is incensed during the Magnificat. The presses intercessory prayers are then said in the post-1970 Roman Rite, followed by the Our Father, and then the closing prayer oratio and final blessing, invocation. The office is frequently followed by benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. Topic. Byzantine Rite Topic. The Byzantine Rite has three basic types of Vespers, Great, Daily, and Small. Great Vespers is used on Sundays and major feast days those when the polyolios is prescribed at matins when it may be celebrated alone or as part of an all-night vigil, as well as on a handful of special days e.g., Good Friday and Pasha afternoon, on certain days of strict fasting it also commences the Divine Liturgy. Daily Vespers is otherwise used. Small Vespers is a very abbreviated form used only on the afternoon before a vigil and is redundant to the subsequent Great Vespers, being a placeholder betwixt the ninth hour and Compline and is seldom used except in monasteries where the vigil literally lasts all night. Since the liturgical day begins at sunset, Vespers is a day's first service and its hymns introduce the day's themes. Topic. Great Vespers. Topic. The general structure of the service is as follows Psalm numbers are according to the Septuagint. Vespers opens with a blessing by the priest and then Come, let us worship. When part of an all-night vigil, the blessing that normally begins matins is used, when part of the divine liturgy, the blessing that is part thereof is used. Proemial Psalm Psalm chapter 103 104 Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, Thou hast been magnified exceedingly. The Great Litany, also called the Litany of Peace, a selection of psalms called a Kathisma, is sung on Saturday evening. It is the first Kathisma, Psalms 1 to 8. Lord, I have cried. 
Psalms 140, 141, 141, 142, 129, 130, and 116, 117 is chanted in the tone of the week. Starting with the last two verses of Psalm chapter 141, 142, Stichira stanzas about the feast day or Christ's resurrection on a Saturday evening are chanted alternately with the verses. The entrance is made with the censer. The hymn Fos Hilaron, O Gladsome Light, is sung. The Prokimenon is chanted. On feast days, there are three or more readings from the Old Testament, called parimia, parables. The prayer, Vouchsafe, O Lord, is read. The litany of fervent supplication. On major feast days, a litany will be served at this point. The clergy and the cantors will process to the back of the church in front of an icon of the feast or saint being commemorated. After the cantors chant hymns pertaining to the feast, the deacon or priest will read a litany with several long petitions, to which the cantors respond with Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy, many times. The priest ends with a long prayer invoking the intercessions of the saints and the Theotokos. The apostatia are chanted. These are verses that teach about the feast day or on a Saturday evening, Christ's resurrection. The Nunc Dimittis, the canticle of Saint Simeon, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. Luke chapter 2 verses 29 to 32, is read. The Apolitikia, troparia of the day, are chanted. If it is an all-night vigil on Saturday night, the hymn, Rejoice, O Virgin Theotokos, is chanted instead. On major feast days, the Artoclesia is performed, at which the priest will bless five loaves of bread which have been prepared in the center of the church, together with wheat, wine and oil. These will be distributed to the faithful later in the service if it is an all-night vigil. Then Psalm chapter 33 34 is read up to the verse, O fear the Lord, all ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The next verse. Rich men have turned poor and gone hungry, but they that seek the Lord shall not be deprived of any good thing." is chanted. The dismissal is given by the priest. If it is an all-night vigil this is a simple blessing by the priest, otherwise, it is the full dismissal sequence, on strict fast days when food and drink are prohibited before Vespers, e.g. Christmas Eve, the Annunciation when it falls on a weekday of Great Lent, or Holy Saturday, Vespers is joined to the Divine Liturgy, functioning in place of the Typica as the framework of the hymns of the Liturgy of the Catechumens. After the readings from the Old Testament, the Trisagion is chanted, followed by the Epistle and Gospel, and the Divine Liturgy proceeds normally from that point. On these occasions, as at other times when the Gospel is read at Vespers, the little entrance is made with the Gospel book instead of the censer. The liturgy of the presanctified gifts always is similarly combined with vespers, with the first half of vespers up to and including the Old Testament readings making up a significant portion of the service. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Armenian liturgy. Topic: <inaudible> The office of vespers Armenian Arigoyan Zam Arigoyan Zam commemorates the hour when the Son of God descended from the cross, and was wrapped in the winding sheet, and laid in the tomb. Vespers is the only service in the Armenian daily office other than the morning service which has hymns proper to the commemoration, feast, or tone assigned to it, a Vespers hymn after Psalm chapter 142 or after Gladsome Light if it is appointed for the day and the lifting up hymn after Psalm chapter 121. Vespers undergoes a wide range of changes depending on the liturgical season. The following outline contains only some of these variations. Outline of Armenian Vespers Blessed is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father. Psalm chapter 55 verse 16 I cried unto God, and he heard me in the evening. Sr astuats kardats I. Psalm chapter 55 verse 17 I waited for my God. Spacey astoutsoi imoi. Glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen, and again in peace. Blessing and glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen. Peace to all. Psalm chapter 86. Glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen. Glory to you, O God, glory to you. For all things, Lord, glory to you, and again in peace. Blessing and glory. 
Now and always. Amen. Peace to all. Psalm chapter 140. Rescue me. A praise back quote Oz's. Psalm chapter 141. Lord I called unto you. Turkardat's back quote Irk back quote Ez. Psalm chapter 142. With my voice I called out unto the Lord. Designy Imovr Tur Kardats backquote I. Glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen. At Sunday Vespers, Saturday evening, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gladsome light. Lois Zuart backquote. Exhortation for the blessing of candles, blessed Lord who dwells in the heights. Orneal Tur. Proclamation, having assembled. Hasilk backquote s exhortation having assembled Hasilk backquote s vespers hymn varies at Sunday vespers Saturday night proclamation let us all say assasts backquote owk backquote exhortation we have the intercessions Berkaz onum backquote during fasts, proclamation, let us beseech Almighty God. Agok backquote ests backquote oak backquote zamenikalna stuats. Otherwise continue here. Prayer, hear our voices. Lauer design its backquote merits backquote. Holy God. Varies, glorified and praised ever virgin. P backquote erawariel ev orneal misht astuatsatsan. Exhortation, save us. P backquote RKEA Z Mez. Proclamation, and again in peace. That the Lord will hearken to the voice of our entreaty. VASN LSEL Linolev. Blessing and glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen. Peace to all. Psalm chapter 121. I lifted my eyes. Hamburdzi Zach backquote s I'm Glory to the Father Now and always Amen Hymn after Psalm chapter 121 varies proclamation for the peace of the whole world VASN Kaghaghout backquote e and Amenane Ashkari Prayer Father Compassionate Hair GT backquote ATS On fasting days Exhortation, Almighty Lord. Tur Aminakal. Proclamation, Prayer. On fasting days and Lenten days which are not Sundays Saturday evenings, continue here. The Prayer of Manasseh, Glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen, Exhortation, Proclamation, Prayer, Remember Your Ministers. Yeshia Tur Zipashtanis K. O. Merciful and compassionate God, Barrier Ev Bazumogormistuats. On Sundays, Saturday evenings, and during the fifty days of Easter. Psalm chapter one hundred thirty-four. Now bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. Ast Ornets backquote ek backquote. Psalm chapter one hundred thirty-eight. Psalm chapter fifty-four. Psalm chapter eighty-six, verses sixteen to seventeen. Glory to the Father. Now and always. Amen. Proclamation. Let us entreat. Condressed's backquote oak backquote. On Sundays, prayer. King of peace. T backquote agawar kaghaghau backquote ian. On Sundays during Eastertide, prayer. By your all powerful and joyous resurrection. K backquote oum aminazar ev rishali. On feasts of the cross, proclamation. By the holy cross. Sourb kak backquote IWS Prayer, defend us Papania Z Mez All services conclude with Blessed is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father Topic. East Syriac Liturgy Topic. 
Vespers are known by the Aramaic or Syriac term Ramsha in the East Syriac liturgy which was used historically in the Church of the East and remains in use in churches descend from it, namely the Assyrian Church of the East, the Ancient Church of the East, the Chaldean Catholic Church, and the Syro-Malabar Catholic Church. <inaudible> Oriental Orthodox in some Oriental Orthodox churches, Vespers is called the raising of incense. Vespers is an introduction and preparation for the liturgy, consisting of a collection of prayers, praises and thanksgiving prayers which request the Lord's blessings upon the sacramental service. This is true for the Coptic Orthodox Church. Use of the term and order of services are somewhat different in the Ethiopian, Syriac, and the other Oriental Orthodox churches. The rites of Vespers in the Coptic Orthodox Church are as follows. The Thanksgiving Prayer, as with all Coptic Orthodox services, Vespers first thanks God, for everything, concerning everything, and in everything. The verses of the symbols. The prayer for the departed. The doxologies, commemorating the saints of the Church and the liturgical season of the Church. The Creed. The prayer for the Gospel. The reading of the Psalm and Gospel. The absolution, conclusion, and blessing Topic. In other Christian churches and religious bodies Topic. Since its inception, the Anglican Communion has maintained an evening office, which is called evening prayer or evensong. There are prescribed forms of the service in the Anglican Prayer Book. A similar form of the service is found in the Vespers section of the Lutheran Hymnal. The Anglican Breviary contains Vespers in English according to the pre-1970 Roman Rite. For information on that service, see above, as in the Roman Breviary. The Liberal Catholic Rite also includes Vespers, including the Te Deum as an alternative to the Magnificat. Daily office books that conform to the historic structure of Vespers have also been published by the Pilgrim Press the New Century Psalter and Westminster John Knox Press Book of Common Worship Daily Prayer. Both publishing houses are affiliated with churches in the Reformed tradition. From its traditional usage, the term Vespers has come to be used more broadly for various evening services of other churches, some of which model their evening services on the traditional Roman Catholic form. Presbyterians and Methodists, as well as Congregationalist religious bodies such as Unitarian Universalism, often include congregational singing, readings, and a period of silent meditation, contemplation, or prayer. Some regular community Vespers services are completely irreligious or at least are not sponsored by any church and serve simply as a time for quiet contemplation in the evening hours. In addition, during the 19th and early 20th centuries, synagogues in the classical reform tradition sometimes referred to their Friday evening worship services as Vespers. Nowadays, such services are instead called Kabbalat Shabbat, which means welcoming the Sabbath. Topic. Historical development Topic. This section incorporates information from the Catholic Encyclopedia of 1917. References to Psalms follow the numbering system of the Septuagint, and said in the Latin of the Vulgate. Topic. Origins Topic. Before the 4th century allusions to the evening prayer are found in the earlier fathers, Clement I of Rome, Clemens Romanus, St. Ignatius, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Origen, the canons of St. Hippolytus, St. Cyprian. Pliny the Younger, in his famous letter at the beginning of the 2nd century, speaks of liturgical reunions of the Christians in the morning and in the evening. Coitus antelucani et vespertini. Vespers is, therefore, together with vigils, the most ancient office known in the Church. The Rule of St. Benedict was written about 530 to 43. Much earlier than this, we find an evening office corresponding to both that of Vespers and that of Compline. Its name varies. John Cassian calls it Vespertina Synaxis, or Vespertina Solomitis. Benedict used the name Vespera, which has prevailed, whence the French word Vepers and the English Vespers. The name, however, by which it was most widely known during that period was Lucernalis or Lucernaria Hora. It was so called because at this hour candles were lit, not only to give light, but also for symbolical purposes. The peregrinatio, 
the date of which is probably the 4th century, gives the liturgical order as practiced at Jerusalem. The author states that this office took place at the 10th hour 4 clock in the evening, it is really the office des lumières, i.e. of the lights, it was celebrated in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, all the lamps and torches of the church were lighted, making, as the author says, an infinite light. In the Antiphonary of Bangor, an Irish document of the 6th century, Vespers are called Hora Duodecima, which corresponds to 6 o clock in the evening, or Hora Incensi, or again ad serium benedicendum. All these names are interesting to note. The Hora Incensi recalls the custom of burning incense at this hour, while at the same time the candles were lighted. The ceremony of the lights at Vespers was symbolic and very solemn. Vespers, then, was the most solemn office of the day and was composed of the psalms called Lucernales. Psalm chapter 140 is called Psalmus Lucernalis by the Apostolic Constitutions. Cassian describes this office as it was celebrated by the monks of Egypt and says they recited twelve psalms as at vigils matins. Then two lessons were read as at vigils, one from the Old, and the other from the New Testament. Each psalm was followed by a short prayer. Cassian says the office was recited towards five or six o'clock and that all the lights were lit. The use of incense, candles, and other lights would seem to suggest the Jewish rites which accompanied the evening sacrifice Exodus chapter 29 verse 39, Numbers chapter 28 verse 4, Psalm chapter 140 verse 2, Daniel chapter 9 verse 21, 1 Chronicles chapter 23 verse 30. It may thus be seen that the lucernarium was, together with vigils, the most important part of the offices of the day, being composed of almost the same elements as the latter, at least in certain regions. Its existence in the 4th century is also confirmed by St. Augustine, St. Ambrose, St. Basil, St. Ephraim, and, a little later, by several councils in Gaul and Spain, and by the various monastic rules. In the 6th century in the 6th century the office of Vespers in the Latin Church was almost the same as it has been throughout the Middle Ages and up to the present day. In a document of unquestionable authority of that period the office is described as follows, the evening hour, or Vespertina Synaxis, is composed of four psalms, a capitulum, a response, a hymn, a versicle, a canticle from the gospel, litany, curiae eleison, Christe eleison, pater with the ordinary finale, oratio, or prayer, and dismissal, regula sancti benedicti, xvii. The psalms recited are taken from the series of psalms from P.S.s. 109 to 147, with the exception of the groups 117 to 127 and 133 to 142. P.S.s. 138, 143, 144 are each divided into two portions, whilst the P.S.s. 115 and 116 are united to form one. This disposition is almost the same as that of the Ordo Romanus except that the number of psalms recited is five instead of four. They are taken, however, from the series 109 to 147. Here, too, we find the capitulum, versicle, and canticle of the Magnificat. The hymn is a more recent introduction in the Roman Vespers. The finale litanies, pater, versicles, prayers, seems all to have existed from this epoch as in the Benedictine Cursus. Like the other hours, therefore, Vespers is divided into two parts, the psalmody, or singing of the psalms, forming the first part, and the capitulum and formulae the second. Vesper time varied according to the season between the tenth hour 4 p.m. and the twelfth 6 p.m. As a matter of fact it was no longer the evening hour, but the sunset hour, so that it was celebrated before the day had departed and consequently before there was any necessity for artificial light regula s benedicti, xli. This is a point to be noted, as it was an innovation. Before this epoch this evening Synaxis was celebrated with all the torches alight. The reason of this is that St. Benedict introduced in the Cursus, another hour, that of Compline, which was prescribed to be celebrated in the evening, and which might be considered as a kind of doubling of the office of Lucernarium. <laughs> office of Vespers in the Middle Ages, Variations Topic. As has already been remarked, the institution of the office of Compline transformed the Lucernarium by taking from it something of its importance and symbolism, the latter at the same time losing its original sense. Saint Benedict called it only Vespera, the name which has prevailed over that of Lucernarium cf. Ducange. 
Glossarium med. et inf. lot. s. v. Vesperae. The Gallican liturgy, the Mozarabic liturgy, and, to a certain extent, the Milanese, have preserved the Lucernarium cf. Baumer Byron, l. c. 358. The Eastern Orthodox Church retains the Lumen Hilaire and some other traces of the ancient Lucernarium in the offices of Vespers and Compline cf. Smith. Dict. Christ. Antique. S. V. Office. Divine. In the rule of St. Columbanus, dated about 590, Vespers still has twelve psalms, amongst which are P.S.'s, C.X.I.I. and C.X.I.I.I., the gradual psalms, P.S.'s, C.X.I.X.S.Q.Q. C.F. Gaujo. Les Crescentes Celtiques. 309. Dict. Dark, Crate, et de Liturgie. S.V. Celtique. 3015. The. Antiphonary of Bangor. A document of Irish origin, gives for Vespers Pease, CXII and also the Gloria in Excelsis. For modifications since the 12th century, cf. Baumer Byron, L. C. 2, 54 SQQ. Topic. Changes as of 1917 Topic. The decree, Divino Afflata. November 1, 1911 involves important changes in the Old Roman Rite Office. There is an entire rearrangement of the Psalms see Reform of the Roman Breviary by Pope Pius X with new ones appointed for each day of the week. These Psalms are to be recited with their antiphons, not only at the Office de Tempore Sundays and Furiae but also on feasts of a lesser rite than doubles of the second class, that is to say, on simples, semidoubles double minors, and double majors. On feasts which are doubles of the second class and a fortiori of the first class, as well as on feasts of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Angels, and Apostles, the Psalms are proper to the feast as heretofore. On all feasts, of whatever rite, the second part of Vespers, that is, the Capitulum, hymn, antiphon of the Magnificat, is taken from the Sanctoral. On semi-doubles and those of a lesser rite the suffrages are now reduced to a single antiphon and orison which is common to all the saints heretofore commemorated, whilst the presses, miserere, and versicles formerly imposed on the greater furiae are now suppressed. Topic. Structure, 1917-1969 the Office of Vespers in general use before 1970 continues to be used today by those adhering to the Roman Rite as in 1962 or to earlier versions. The structure of Vespers prior to 1970 is as follows. Vespers begins with the singing or chanting of the opening versicles Deus, in auditorium miam intend. Domini, ad adiavandum mi festina. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto. Sicut irat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Alleluia, O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, from Septuagesima until Easter, Laus tibi domini, rex eternae gloriae, praise be to thee O Lord, King of eternal glory, replaces Alleluia. Five psalms are sung, each concluding with the doxology Gloria Patri. Each psalm is preceded and followed with an antiphon. The little chapter, a short biblical verse, is read. The hymn, which varies according to season and feast, is sung, followed by its versicle and response. The Magnificat, preceded and followed with an antiphon, is then sung. The presses are then set on certain greater ferias. The collect of the day is said, followed by commemorations of any concurring feasts according to the rubrics. If Compline does not immediately follow, Vespers may end with the seasonal Marian antiphon. The office is frequently followed by benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. Topic. Symbolism, the hymns Topic. Notwithstanding the changes brought about in the course of time, Vespers still remains the great and important office of the evening. As already pointed out, it recalls the sacrificium vespertinum of the old law. In the same manner as the night is consecrated to God by the office of the vigil, so also is the end of the day by Vespers. 
It terminates, as matins formerly terminated, and lauds at present terminates, by election, or reading, from the Gospel, or Canticum Evangelii, which, for Vespers, is always the Magnificat. This is one of the characteristic traits of Vespers, one of the liturgical elements which this particular office has retained in almost all regions and at all times. There are, however, a few exceptions, as in some liturgies the Magnificat is sung at Lodz cf. Cabral in Dict, Dark, et de Liturgie. S. V. Contiques Evangeliques. This place of honor accorded so persistently to the Canticle of Mary from such remote antiquity is but one of the many, and of the least striking, proofs of the devotion which has always been paid to the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Church. The psalms used at Vespers have been selected, from time immemorial, from P.S.'s, C.I.X. to C.X.L.V.I.I., with the exception of P.'s, C.X.V.I.I.I., -I -I, which on account of its unusual length does not square with the others, and is consequently ordinarily divided up into parts and recited at the little hours. P.S.'s, I to C.V.I.I.I. are consecrated to matins and lauds, whilst the three last psalms, C.X.L.V.I.I.I. to C.L., belong invariably to lauds. The series of hymns consecrated to Vespers in the Roman breviary also form a class apart and help to give us some hints as to the symbolism of this hour. The hymns are very ancient, dating probably, for the most part, from the 6th century. They have this particular characteristic. They are all devoted to the praise of one of the days of the creation, according to the day of the week, thus, the first, Luce's Creator Optime. On Sunday, to the creation of light, the second, on Monday, to the separation of the earth and the waters, the third, on Tuesday, to the creation of the plants, the fourth, on Wednesday, to the creation of the sun and moon, the fifth, on Thursday, to the creation of the fish, the sixth, on Friday, to the creation of the beasts of the earth, Saturday is an exception, the hymn on that day being in honor of the Blessed Trinity, because of the office of Sunday then commencing. Topic. Solemn Vespers before the Second Vatican Council Topic. On weekdays that are not major feasts Vespers features hardly any ceremonies and the celebrant wears the usual choir dress. However, on Sundays and greater feasts Vespers may be solemn. Solemn Vespers differ in that the celebrant wears the cope, he is assisted by assistants also in copes, incense is used, and two acolytes, a thurifer, and at least one master of ceremonies are needed. On ordinary Sundays only two assistants are needed while on greater feasts four or six assistants may be used. The celebrant and assistants vest in the surplice and the cope, which is of the color of the day. The celebrant sits at the sedile, in front of which is placed a lectern, covered with a cloth in the color of the day. The assistants sit on benches or stools facing the altar, or if there are two assistants, they may sit at the sedile next to the celebrant the first assistant in the place of the deacon and the second assistant in place of the subdeacon. The celebrant and assistants follow the acolytes into the church wearing the beretta. Upon arriving in the sanctuary the acolytes place their candles on the lowest altar step, after which they are extinguished. The celebrant and assistants kneel on the lowest step and recite the Aperi Domini silently, after which they go to their places and recite the Pater Noster and Ave Maria silently. A curious practice which exists from ancient times is the intoning of the antiphons and psalms to the celebrant. The rubrics presuppose that the first assistant or cantors will intone all which the celebrant must sing by singing it to him first in a soft voice after which the celebrant sings it again aloud. The five antiphons and psalms are sung with the first assistant intoning the antiphons and the cantors intoning the psalms. During the singing of the psalms all sit. After the psalms, the acolytes relight their candles and carry them to each side of the lectern for the chapter. The assistants follow, standing facing each other in front of the lectern. The celebrant then sings the chapter, after which all return to their places. The first assistant intones the hymn to the celebrant, and all stand while the hymn is sung. The first assistant intones the Magnificat to the celebrant, who sings the first line aloud. The celebrant and the first two assistants go to altar, and the altar is then incensed as at mass while the first two assistants hold the ends of the cope. Other altars in the church may be incensed as well. The first assistant then incenses the celebrant, after which the thurifer incenses the others as at mass. If there are commemorations, the acolytes and assistants again go to the lectern as described above for the chapter. The choir sings the antiphons, the cantors sing the versicles, and the celebrant sings the collects. After all commemorations, the celebrant sings Dominus Vobiscum, the cantor sings Benedicamus Domino, and the celebrant sings Fidelium Anime.
The Marian antiphon is said in the low voice. Especially in English-speaking countries, benediction of the Blessed Sacrament often follows solemn vespers. Musical settings the psalms and hymns of the Vespers service have attracted the interest of many composers, including Claudio Monteverdi, Antonio Vivaldi, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and Anton Bruckner. Sergei Rachmaninoff's Vespers is really a setting of the Eastern Orthodox all night vigil. See also Ramsha Agni Parthine Blagen Muj Book of Hours Canonical Hours Evening Prayer Matins Marie Night Hours Fos Hilaran Sacred Music Maghrib Prayer Equivalent Islamic Prayer at Sunset Topic References Topic Topic. External links Topic. The Text of Vespers for Today's Date Roman Catholic. The Roman Catholic General Instruction for the Liturgy of the Hours An Explanation of First Vespers Vespers in the Orthodox Church Sunday Vespers in Latin and with Gregorian chant Ordinary form of the Roman Rite An Order for Methodist Evening Prayer PDF. Byzantine Catholic Archipaki of Pittsburgh. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed., 1913. Article name needed. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton.